Hello, and welcome back to Tea with Tracy, coming to you on Tuesdays, spilling relevant tips, trends, and talk in all things real estate, homeownership, and community related. It's been a little bit of a hiatus. I did take uh, the summer months off of July and August, but really excited to be back in the studio and here with you in September. And to kick off this fall season, I have joining me in studio today, Jenny Miller with Ross Mortgage. Welcome, Jenny. Hey, thanks for having me, Tracy. It has been a while, but I'm excited to be back. Yes, I'm so happy to have you back. And so what better topic to kind of kick off like, you know, the fall season, the fall market, you know, everybody's kind of getting back to school, getting back into the routine. But the question that I get asked no matter where I go is, is this a good time to buy or sell? You know, how's the market? And so I thought, you know what? Who better to bring on than the financial expert? And let's chat a little bit about that today. You know, is this still a good time to buy? I mean, I think the answer is yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 And so we're not just going to tell you, yes, of course, it's still a good time to buy. You you came today. I mean, we have some numbers. We have some information for you because, you know, our biggest thing, and that's why we work very well together, is because we like our clients to make informed decisions. And even mm -hmm. if you're not our client, even if we're just somebody that, you know, we can help you and have a conversation and, and help you make that informed decision. Um, but you need to have good information to be able to make good decisions. And mm -hmm. there's no one answer for everybody, right? So yep. while yes, it is a great market, it's still a great time to buy or sell. It might not be for you. And the most important thing is you need to talk to somebody starting with, uh, you know, a seasoned loan officer, someone like Jenny, um, you know, so that you can take a look at your information and what is right for you. But if we are talking mm -hmm. generally, um, you know, as far as the market goes, I mean, from a, from a lending perspective, it, it does look favorable for buyers. It does. And again, every person has their own relationship with money and they need to look at their situation independently, but with solid numbers. Right. So, um, you know, affordability and lack of inventory continue to plague, you know, um, the housing market. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so, you know, appreciation right now is actually at an all-time high. Interest rates are high, right? And a lot of people opted to pull back from the market. Right, right. right. Higher. I mean, you know, when we say high, that's very relative because when I purchased my first condo outside, you know, when I first graduated from college, I mean, 8.5%, like that was the normal rate. So they're still lower than that at they the are. moment. Yep, at they the are, moment. for sure. <laughs> and, you know, my biggest thing I've, I've – Got people who were in the market, then they decided to pull back a little bit. And they're yep. like, we want to wait for rates to come down. We want to wait yeah. for home prices to come down. So yeah. the first thing, let's talk about home prices. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, as it's Econ 101. Yeah. Supply <laughs> and, and demand. demand. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So focusing on that, we don't, we don't anticipate having any type of, you know, housing crash. Right. Prices dropping, anything like that. In fact, um. The affor housing affordability reports mm -hmm. came out today. And so without getting too, you know, nerdy on the numbers, <laughs> yeah. let's say, yeah. um, with CoreLogic, that's one of the, you know, the big um, yeah. companies that report. Year to date, we are at 5.2% over last year at this time in terms of home values. Now, if yeah. we extrapolate that number, it's going to translate to 9% year over year. Right. So 9% and then there's a few others on the low side, 6% year over year, up to 10%. Okay. All right. So again, a house at X amount of dollars right. today, it's going to cost more a year from now. Yes. And and I think like, I know I've seen that with some of my own buyers, some that said, oh, you know, we the, the interest rates are going up a little bit. Maybe we're just going to wait a little bit. You know, oh, maybe we'll wait for prices to come down. There are a lot of people, even though we were here saying, there's no crash coming. There's no crash coming. There's no crash coming. There were still a lot of people who truly believed that prices were just going to drop on, on homes. And, mm -hmm. um, they did not, <laughs> they just continued to go up. So as you mentioned, like, you know, the, that, that 5.2%, but it, it equates to closer to like 9%, right? So 
if we look at just $100,000, right? If you were to spend $100,000 last year, it's 109000 this year. Mm-hmm. It's going to be like 119000 And like, what would that look like for something like a you know, $500,000 house? Because that's a little bit closer to, I mean, the way values have gone. Mm-hmm. Most people are a little closer to that $500,000 number than they are the $100,000 number when it comes to a purchase. Exactly. So yeah. keeping things super simple. Yeah. We'll start with $100,000. As far as the loan amount, if you borrow that at 7% versus $100,000 at 6%, it's a $62 a month difference. Okay. Now, we're just talking flat loan amount and interest rate. Right. But the question about do I buy now or do I wait? You know, on a $500,000 house, 20% down, you've got a $400,000 loan amount. So at 7% interest, which is actually kind of a low Right. Quote right now. Yeah. Give me a second because I wrote it down here. Yeah. Principal and interest, you're looking at $2,661. Okay. So $400,000 at 7% interest. Okay. So let's say you wait two years and we go ahead and we use that um, very conservative year to date. Yeah. 5.2. <laughs> okay. Two years from now, that house is going to be worth $553,300. Okay. Yeah. Be exact. Okay. So $53,300 more. Yeah. Interest rate, if it came down to 6%, you buy a house at 553, right? Yeah. 20% down. Now um, you're looking at a payment of 2654. That's $7 a month less. Yeah. So by waiting, you're you're not saving anything. And, and actually that house probably, well, that house will be gone. <laughs> but I mean, if rates do come down, we're just going to have the bigger problem that we've been having. I I mean, not that it's gone away completely. We still have multiple offers. We still have that frenzy Mm -hmm. for those move-in ready homes in the areas that are, you know, desirable and priced well. I mean, we still have that, but it's not quite as bad as it was a year or two ago, Um, Right. you know, because you might have five offers, six offers in instead of 30 or 40. But right. And that was crazy town. It was it was definitely crazy town. I, I mean, spreadsheets. That's what I had to do for my for my sellers. I mean, it was just a spreadsheet. There's no names, no anything. Just offer one, two, three. And like it just was all in a spreadsheet. But but um, but yeah. So it, what what are you doing? You're not benefiting yourself by waiting. Not, no, not necessarily. And again, it depends on your plan. Right. Right. If you're buying a home and it's a short term type mm-hmm. situation. By not buying now, potentially you're losing tens of thousands of dollars in equity in a very short period of time. Right. So that's the cost of waiting. Sure. Okay. Um, even people, we talked about if the rates drop, you have more people entering the market, right? Yep. Which then is going to mean the homes that are out there, like you said, multiple offers driving up the price, bid yeah. over ask. And um, I do have calculators too that can help people determine If you do bid over the asking price, Mm -hmm. how soon would you recoup that? That amount over. Yeah, upside down. Right. Right? Yep. So there's all these other factors aside from payment, right, right, that um, can contribute to long-term wealth. And many times, and I think it's human nature to be a little more about the here and now, maybe a little more short-sighted than, um, you know, planning and looking into the future. I mean, if I had a crystal ball, I'd be a rich woman, right? (laughs) Wouldn't we all? Yes, yes. Um, And renting, too. uh, The cost of rent. It's it's really, like, skyrocketed. So it's like you wait to buy, but is it costing you more to, you know, to rent? Right. But, you know, people who might be traveling for jobs or aren't, you know, tied to a physical location. Right. Hey, they just need to weigh the facts with their situation. Absolutely. Get the information, get the numbers, mm-hmm. weigh it against your current lifestyle, what, you know, what you have going on and and make that decision. But I will say that, you know, over the years consistently my clients who not only talk with a seasoned loan officer but also with their financial advisors, the ones mm-hmm. who are looking at their overall portfolio and long-term, you know, retirement, all of that, they are all told to purchase sooner rather than later. Mm -hmm. Um, So, but again, that is, you know, each person needs to, you know, get the information for their, their specific situation. But, but the market, what the rates are, the rates are what they are, Mm -hmm. you know, Um, you know, if 
you you get into your home and the rates do tend do happen to drop down, great, you can refinance, right? And you can take advantage of that, but at least you're in your home. Um, I mean, the financial piece is obviously a very big piece and that, that is sure. important. You want to make sure you can afford and feel comfortable in the home that you're living in. But at the same time, you know, the number one thing that I tell my clients is where do you want to be? Right. So mm -hmm. you want to make sure that like if there's a certain location, you know, you want to be for a while, then, you know, making a move sooner rather than later, it could affect your your lifestyle overall. I have clients mm -hmm. who needed to be in a specific school district and the the pain of driving kids to and from school every day and then with activities. And, you know, if you have something going on with work and you need to then arrange and find, I mean, there's just a level of, and then gas, gas is not inexpensive. I mean, no. <laughs> you know, as well. So, you know, you, you have to factor all of those pieces in to make your decision. Exactly. Nobody wants to be house poor. No one wants to break out in sweats or right. have buyer's <laughs> remorse for sure. Right. That's never, ever a good idea. Right. But a higher rate environment, it does eliminate some of your competition. It does. Reduces multiple offer situations. May put you in a position where you could um, negotiate a 2-1 buy down on interest rates. Perhaps seller concessions. Perhaps. Okay? Not, I don't think we're quite we're quite there yet, Jenny. But <laughs> <laughs> I remain hopeful. But Not quite yet. But yeah. <laughs> but I, I do we think might be there, getting closer to there more are benefits. A, yeah. You know, there are benefits to analyzing every market. Yes. And when it feels right, make that choice. And I'm always happy to talk to anybody about what their options are. Your, you know, your job is to provide the information, mine is to analyze it, and then yep. let's talk about it. Absolutely. Yes. So I, I don't know if you have anything else to add. I feel like that was, we, you know, we just wanted to provide you with a, a quick snapshot and just kind of give you the the pulse on where the market is and and how things are looking right now. But if you have specific questions for your situation, please feel free to reach out. Um, if you don't have somebody that you're working with, um, you know, Jenny and I are always happy to help provide information. Even if you don't work with us, we're always happy to provide information. We just, we like to help and we want to make sure that yep. people are making the best decisions for themselves and their families. Absolutely. So. Thanks for having me, Tracy. So thanks for joining me again, Jenny. Thank you all for tuning in and we'll see you next time on Tea with Tracy.